This program is rated PG and may contain mature subject matter. Viewer discretion is advised. Over the centuries, France has been a powerful force in shaping the modern world. You just walk down the street in Paris, the city of light, and you see centuries of innovation right before your very eyes. From innovations in technology, to enlightenment thinkers, to visionary leaders. The French Revolution is a really fundamental moment in not just French history, but world history. France is the cradle of core ideas when it comes to the freedoms that we now take for granted. France is a country of uh, art de vivre. If you love to enjoy life, uh, it's a very nice place. The diversity of the country, thick, rich forests, fields of lavender. Then you go down south to the coast of the Mediterranean, and it's beaches and sun and fashion and style. French inventors have allowed us to explore once unimaginable places. There is a tradition of innovation in France, and you see that in the food, you see that in the arts, and you see that in technology. They made food and wine a priority. They taught us that it could be art and that it should be art. To celebrate how much France has impacted the world, we're going to conduct a thought experiment. Over the next hour, we're going to imagine a world where some of France's game-changing innovations are stripped away. There wouldn't be a single person on Earth who wouldn't be affected. The world would be in very big trouble. This is History Erased, the world without France. <laughs> Nestled in the heart of Europe, France has long been a tour de force of innovation. The country of romance, France has inspired artists and dreamers from around the globe. It's hard to imagine our world without France's influence, but we're about to do just that. Over the next hour, we're going to celebrate French contributions to science, exploration, and the arts. Then, one by one, we're going to strip away these game-changing breakthroughs. Everyone on Earth will be affected. We'll watch the day's events unfold as a group of friends gather for a party and through the eyes of imaginative children to see how erasing these innovations will impact the world. France is the gold standard for great food, a nation of culinary delights, the birthplace of haute cuisine. It's a country that produces more types of cheese than there are days in a year and is home to many of the finest wines in the world. Wine is a gift of God. When I have a lovely dinner with my, with my friends, opening a Chateau Petrus or an amazing Bordeaux. It improves the things that it goes with. Cheese tastes better with the right wine. With a history that traces back over 2,000 years, wine lovers around the world owe much to France and the French passion and ingenuity that developed incredible wines. In the 1860s, the French wine industry was booming, but it faced a major problem, wine spoilage on a vast scale. Wine is going bad. It doesn't keep for very long before it essentially starts turning into vinegar. The French wine industry was turning sour. Napoleon III turned to one man to save it, Louis Pasteur. At the beginning, Louis Pasteur was working on wine, and most of the people don't know that. For France, Pasteur is probably the most famous scientific hero. There are streets named after him, many statues devoted to him. Pasteur was a celebrated chemist in Lille, France, who studied the science behind fermentation and wine preservation. Pasteur found microscopic organisms in samples of spoiled wine, which he believed were the culprit. Bacteria. Pasteur discovered that if you were to heat wine consistently over a period of time, it kills the bacteria that would otherwise spoil wine. Pasteur's research transformed winemaking. While we no longer need to heat wine to remove bacteria, pasteurization revolutionized French wine and paved the way for a global wine industry. Each year, the world produces enough wine to fill 10,000 Olympic-sized swimming pools. Without the $300 billion wine industry, mealtime, celebrations, religious ceremonies, and countless other special moments would be dramatically different. A world without wine would be a much more dull world. The flavors, the varieties, 
it's a wonderful thing, a wonderful contribution to world culture. Cheers. Several decades later, Pasteur's discovery would have an even greater global impact. In the early 1900s, food safety was a major problem. That was a time when France suffered, as many other countries did, from a lot of infection carried by food and drink, and public health was a really serious issue. Milk especially was a breeding ground for bacteria, and children in particular were susceptible to milk-borne illness. Milk is hugely important, especially in feeding infants, and the transmission of diseases through milk was a major problem that needed to be solved. The same method Pasteur invented to preserve wine was introduced to dairy industries. It had a dramatic and wide-reaching impact on public health. Very rapidly, once pasteurization was introduced, millions of lives were saved. Today, many types of food and drink, such as meats, dairy products, fruit juice, nuts, and spices, are pasteurized as a major line of defense against food poisoning and disease. Louis Pasteur has saved many more lives than we can even imagine. Wine was also the inspiration for another important advancement in preserving food and drink made by a physicist monk. Traditionally, the best vineyards were owned by the monasteries, and monks played a critical role in the development of superior wine production methods. In the vein of perfecting wine, a French monk discovers a way to keep wine cold. He revolutionized personal refrigeration. Abbe Marcel Odifran wanted a way to keep the monastery's wine supply cool. One of the first designs was a hand crank model. In 1903, an electric motor replaced the hand crank, and the refrigerator hit the global market. Essentially using a heat source to create a cool area. Uh, a revolutionary idea at the time. Prior to that, it was really ice that you used in order to cool things. In 1911, Audifrain's refrigerators were commercialized by General Electric in the United States. Refrigerators have changed the world. They liberate you from the tyranny of the growing cycle. So you can have fresh food longer and in seasons where it doesn't grow. Refrigeration also allows people to preserve medicine. We keep a lot of vaccines, antibiotics in our refrigerators. 300 years before Audifrain, France was home to the most famous winemaking monk of all time. Dom Perignon. In the 17th century, Perignon worked tirelessly to perfect wine. And to this day, his name is associated with the best champagne. Champagne has become synonymous with the celebration of anything, a birthday, a celebration of success in sport, of the passing of the old year into the new. I think champagne is the most cheerful drink on earth. You cannot be unhappy when you are drinking a glass of champagne. I have tested this theory. Great French wine was also the inspiration for an infamous cocktail called Vin Mariani. Invented by French chemist Angelou Mariani in 1863, the drink was a health tonic of Bordeaux red wine and coca leaves. Loved by many, including Thomas Edison, Queen Victoria, and even Pope Leo XII. In response to prohibition in 19th century Atlanta, American pharmacist John Pemberton came up with a non-alcoholic version and called it Coca-Cola. While wine has been at the heart of many French culinary innovations, the country's legacy in food preservation was also inspired by hungry soldiers. When Napoleon wanted to move his armies into enemy territory, he needed to keep his troops strong, and that meant keeping them well-fed. Napoleon always said an army marches on its stomach. Under Napoleon, there is a contest to find a way to preserve food over time and over distance so that you can feed your expeditionary force. Nicolas Appert, a Parisian chef, came up with the prize-winning method in 1810, canning. Nicolas Appert's process was to put food in a container, put the container in a water bath, heat it up, it kills the bacteria, and as it cools, it creates a vacuum seal so that no more bacteria can get in. Another French inventor took his technique one crucial step further. In 1810, Philippe de Girard invented the tin can. Its impact on the battlefield was immediate. The move into the kitchen was a revolution. 
Today, 200 billion cans of food are produced worldwide each year. Canning foods allow people to have access to food when they might have otherwise starved. Canning remains essential to the modern food chain. France not only revolutionized food by making it safer to eat and last longer, it also took culinary pleasure to extraordinary heights. In fact, France is responsible for the idea of the modern restaurant itself. The French word restaurant comes from the idea of restoration, that you go to eat to feel good again, to restore your energy, your well-being. Chef Antoine Beauvillier opened up the Grand Taverne de Londres restaurant in Paris in 1782. He offered a selection of fine cuisine served at private tables to everyday Parisians, an experience which until then had been available only in the homes of nobility. The idea of the restaurant is that you're not just being served whatever's there, but there is a selection. The abolition of France's nobility after the French Revolution led many unemployed private chefs to open their own businesses. Restaurant dining was set to greet the world. Restaurants and cafes have been critical gathering places for people throughout modern history. Now restaurants is a moment of sharing with your love, with your friends, with your family. It's changed the way people are meeting, enjoying moment together. As we begin our thought experiment, French improvements to culinary safety are removed from the modern world. The healthy food we now take for granted is no longer safe at home or anywhere. Imagine inviting friends to a dinner party and these vital health precautions are suddenly gone. Hey, are you okay? Yeah, yeah, it's just my stomach. I'm good, I'm good. All right. Yeah. Food poisoning would run rampant in your kitchen and around the world. More people would get sick because of the food that they eat. Ugh which means that hospitals would be even more taxed and overloaded than they are today. There wouldn't be a single person on Earth who wouldn't be affected. You see here? If France was erased, uh, the world would be in very big trouble. But as we continue to imagine the world without French innovation, many more lives will be at stake. We've launched a thought experiment to imagine our lives without some of France's greatest contributions. Erasing elements of food safety has impacted people around the world, including the host of our dinner party. Ah! We gotta get you to the hospital. Many people are sick, hospitals are overloaded, and a safe meal is hard to find. But as we continue to strip away key innovations, some of humanity's most vital lifelines will also be cut. France has a long history of scientific excellence and was at the forefront during the Age of Enlightenment in the 18th century, a period of philosophical advances and great scientific discovery. During the Enlightenment, there was this increasing shift away from centers of power, from voices of authority, to the use of reason and evidence transforming the role of science in society and making it much more central. By the early 19th century, the sciences were flourishing and Paris was at the center of major developments in medicine. There was so much work going on by different medical doctors in France that we can still feel its influence and many discoveries were made at that time. Nurse, she needs to be seen right away. One key French innovation has become the first line of defense for doctors worldwide. In 1816, a young doctor in Paris named René Lenec introduced the world to a new device that changed medicine forever, the stethoscope. The single most important killer in not only France, but all of Europe was tuberculosis. Tuberculosis was an ugly, awful, and extremely fatal disease of the lungs. If you think about the chest, it's just this rigid box. You couldn't figure out what was going on inside the patient's body until they were a cadaver. And then it was too late. 
Lenec was called to see a young female patient on the right bank in Paris who complained of shortness of breath. He had difficulty listening to her chest with his ear alone. He rolls up a notebook into as tight a cylinder as possible, and he put one end on her chest and the other to his ear, and he was amazed, and he said, surprised and satisfied that he could hear distinctly the beating of her heart. The stethoscope was born. That sounds like a simple thing, but it was transformational in medicine. The stethoscope was the first tool that we had to really understand what's going on inside the body as it's happening. The innovation opened up a whole new era of medicine where diseases could be studied, understood, and treated. A stethoscope is absolutely amazing in terms of evolution of medicine. The stethoscope is an instrument that can work without electricity, without a great deal of expense, and in difficult to access places in the world. It's still an instrument that doctors reach for first and foremost in beginning to understand what's going on with your body. This vital tool broadened the realm of medical diagnosis. We can think of x-rays, ECG machines, CAT scans, MRI machines. All of these tools are serving the paradigm that was launched with the advent of the stethoscope. Over a century after Lenek brought the world the stethoscope, his revolutionary diagnostic tool would become instrumental for another one of France's medical contributions to the world. Doctors Without Borders is one of the leading medical relief agency worldwide. In May of 1968, images of children dying from hunger during the civil war in Nigeria compelled a group of French doctors to act. In 1971, they formed an organization that provides international medical aid and speaks up against humanitarian injustices globally. Doctors Without Borders represents some of the best ideas from France, the idea of rights that human beings have beyond uh, the confines of a country. The group was collectively awarded the Nobel Prize for Peace in 1999. It's an organization that goes beyond any national sphere to just go and help people wherever they are. France has also played a key role in our fight against cancer. In the 1890s, a remarkable researcher in Paris made discoveries that would change the world. Marie Curie was a young Polish woman who went to Paris to study physics. And this is at a time when very few people studying physics were female. Marie Curie conducted pioneering research on radiation and later discovered two new radioactive elements, radium and polonium. The elements that she discovered could be applied to tumors to cause the tumors to shrink. The delivery of the radioactivity could be very, very specific. We call this discovery of Marie Curie brachytherapy, or therapy that brings the radiation right to the tumor. Marie Curie's work is also a foundation for so much of what's called nuclear medicine, where you're using radioactive isotopes in the body to help diagnose and treat cancers. She won a Nobel Prize for her research and a second one for the elements she discovered. She didn't just get one Nobel Prize, she received two, and she was the first person to ever do that, male or female. Marie Curie also gave us life-saving tools in times of war. Many French hospitals had X-ray machines at the outbreak of World War I, but they were far from the battlefields. The injured were dying before they could be assessed for treatment. There were many more wounded soldiers than in any previous conflict. Curie invented the first radiological car, a vehicle containing an X-ray machine that could be driven right up to the battlefield. She learned to drive and taught herself basic auto repairs, like changing a flat tire and cleaning the carburetor. What Marie Curie did on the battlefield was incredible. These mobile X-ray units, known as Little Curies, treated an estimated one million soldiers. Mary Curie's impact cannot be overstated, which unfortunately resulted in her death because of a lack of understanding of the long-term effects of radioactivity. In her sacrifice, she saved countless lives. Diagnosing and treating patients in the modern world relies heavily on precision and accuracy to fight disease. 
another game-changing French innovation would offer just that. The idea of a universal system of measurement is one I think most people may take for granted. In the mid-1700s, there were so many different units of measurement, it was almost impossible to keep track of them. During the French Revolution, a group of scientists changed this and created the metric system. The metric system is a great example of the, of the power and the value of standardization. It's based on an extremely simple numbering system, essentially powers of 10. So you'll find metric everywhere from measurements in the kitchen to the measurements needed to launch a rocket into space and then to go explore distant planets. Its universal adoption in medicine was life-saving. If you stripped away a universal system like the metric system, modern medicine across borders wouldn't be possible. We use it to measure our patients, their size, their weight, their body mass, and we use it to measure their medicines. Today, the metric system, the stethoscope, and certain cancer radiation treatments have become cornerstones of healthcare. But as our thought experiment continues, and some of France's medical contributions are erased, we no longer have these life-saving tools at our disposal. We'd be in serious trouble in the medical world. We wouldn't be able to look inside the body. We wouldn't be able to anticipate disease. We wouldn't be able to figure out diagnosis. Worldwide, patients like our host suffer without proper diagnosis and treatment. Errors in medical dosages could harm and kill people. We'd lose vital humanitarian aid in times of disaster and war. The world would be a much scarier, sicker, more dangerous place. With the loss of France's medical advances, the human species is suddenly vulnerable. But the planet itself will be at risk when we lose France's innovations in exploration. In our thought experiment, the disappearance of some of France's contributions to food safety, science, and medicine has left the world suffering. Our dinner party host and countless others around the world have been struck with unknown illnesses, and we've lost tools to treat them. But France's contributions don't end there. French imagination has pushed the limits of what we can achieve and has allowed us to explore entirely new worlds, both in reality and make-believe like these two young artists creating their own masterpiece. At the turn of the century, our window into the ocean was incredibly small. People really didn't know anything about the ocean. Diving it was largely for professionals, for people with big hard helmets on their heads, big lead boots and a hose to the surface. That all changed when a young Frenchman took the plunge into the great unknown. Jacques Cousteau was the forerunner of undersea exploration. My grandfather, Jacques Cousteau, first and foremost, was constantly asking questions. He was someone who was full of enthusiasm for the world. He loved technology and gadgets. He was always a said, he just had a curious mind. Cousteau began his love affair with the ocean after a car accident at the age of 26. He was told to swim in the Mediterranean every day, and he became an avid freediver and was frustrated that he couldn't spend more time underwater. And he worked with Emile Gagnon in 1942 and 1943 to co-invent the aqualung, or what we refer to today as scuba diving. Scuba stands for a self-contained underwater breathing apparatus. Once you can breathe underwater, you can stay underwater long enough to explore. My grandfather was a pioneer in underwater cameras, underwater habitats, techniques for scientific discovery and exploration. Scuba today allows us to build underwater, transforming our world above the waves. So much of our modern cities depend on being able to build from the very bottom of a river or a lake out and up. A lot of the underwater infrastructure that we take for granted today is made possible by people living and working underwater. Not only has scuba opened up the waters to industry and recreation, it's helped us understand the sustainability of our planet. The oceans regulate our climate. Rainfall, agriculture, weather, all of that is driven by the oceans. Exploration of the ocean, which covers over 70% of the planet, allows us to research areas like coral reefs, study fish populations, and discover new medicine. 
The oceans are a primary source of protein for a few billion people. They are critical to the survival of every single living creature on Earth. They provide more than 60% of our oxygen. That is a fundamental truth. We wouldn't know any of those things if it wasn't for the ability for people to explore the oceans freely and scuba dive. French imagination introduced us to the magical world below the sea and carried us skyward for our first bird's eye view of the earth. The French were, were the first to fly in hot air balloons. Being able to fly is something that as a species, I think we've always dreamt about. The hot air balloon starts in France back in the 18th century. It's invented by the Montgolfier brothers. The Montgolfier brothers were paper makers who noticed warm air lifting pieces of paper in their factory. From that observation, they discovered that hot air could be trapped in a bag. So they made it bigger, much bigger. Filling a, a sack of hot air, the balloon itself, uh, it, it actually becomes less dense than the air around it, and so it floats. The first successful untethered flight with passengers happened on September 19, 1783. Those on board were a motley crew, one sheep, one duck, and one rooster. The first flight with humans took place just two months later. The balloon rose to 3,000 feet and drifted five miles. For the first time, humans were no longer earthbound. The age of flight was born. I think being able to demonstrate that we can actually fly, we can actually do controlled flight, really opened everything up. Well, the Montgolfier brothers with their hot air balloon are the beginning of a very long tradition of French obsession with aviation. This is a revolution, and I think planted the seed then for the Wright brothers and for modern aviation as we know it today. It's hard to imagine a world without flying now. They really laid the groundwork for modern life. And France built one of the world's first wind tunnels. French engineer Gustave Eiffel, builder of many iconic landmarks like the Eiffel Tower and the Statue of Liberty, built a wind tunnel at the base of the Eiffel Tower in 1909 to advance the new science of aeronautics. In 1907, a French engineer, Paul Cornu, took the limits of flight one step further. He built the first piloted helicopter to lift off, using two rotor blades instead of wings. Today, helicopters are a crucial mode of transportation around the world. Helicopters are remarkable uh, instruments of flight because they allow for much more precision than search and rescue in surveying difficult landscapes to move medical supplies. When a patient's being transported in a helicopter to the hospital, they have a much better chance of survival. A world with helicopters was imagined decades earlier by perhaps one of the most imaginative Frenchmen of all time, Jules Verne, an influential science fiction writer. Jules Verne's novels predicted a world with transportation technologies that wouldn't be conceived until after his death. Up to a century before their invention, Verne wrote about the use of vehicles like helicopters and submarines and trips to the moon. Jules Verne is another example of French imagination, this spirit of anything's possible. One of the most translated authors in the world, his stories have inspired generations of dreamers, inventors, and explorers. Today, technologies that allow us to go deep into the ocean and soaring into the sky and beyond are crucial to our understanding of the blue marble we call home. As our thought experiment continues, and we strip away France's contributions to exploration, our very survival is now in jeopardy. Without fundamental understanding of our oceans, things would be a lot worse, and thus, we would be in much more trouble than we already are. We could face environmental devastation. The world would be unrecognizable. And things will only get worse when we remove France's many contributions to the arts and humanities. French innovations like pasteurization, the stethoscope, and scuba diving have had an incredible impact on the modern world. French explorers changed how we experience the planet, in the sea and the air. They've also had an incredible impact on explorations of art and personal expression. The artistic style Impressionism developed in France. 
and Impressionism was really all about capturing a moment, the reflection of light on lilies on a pond. Monet, Renoir, Degas, they really create the palette of the modern world. France also becomes a place where painters from other parts of the world go to immerse themselves in the culture. Some in that scene enjoyed another famous drink from France. In 1792, French doctor Pierre Audinaire created absinthe as a health tincture. The characteristic green color earned it the name La Fée Verte, or the Green Fairy. In the 19th century, French troops drank it to prevent malaria, while others sought the more creative effects of the alcoholic drink. French ingenuity in the arts goes well beyond the canvas and inspires filmmakers to this day. Cinema was invented in France, and it's another wonderful contribution that France makes to art in the world. It's a new art form in and of itself. It becomes this incredible piece of the language of expression in the whole world. When you go to a place like Cannes, you really get a sense of the history as well as the legacy of cinema. The Lumiere brothers were instrumental in making the cinema a reality. On December 28, 1895, Auguste and Louis Lumiere unveiled their incredible invention, a camera projector called the Cinematographe at the Grand Café in Paris. It was the first public screening of a film. They made a series of uh, very short film. One is a train coming into a train station. One is people leaving the factories. They made the first funny film. <laughs> When people first went to the movies, people were just terrified. It really looked like, like something out of witchcraft. At the cafe that day was Parisian magician Georges Méliès. He was mesmerized by what he saw. He's not really well known as a filmmaker, yet there are some images from his film that are very well known. One of them is that image of the moon. Méliès invented movie magic. camera tricks like stop motion, dissolves, fades, and double exposure to delight and entertain. He created a new vocabulary, the language by which we tell stories through film. What's significant about French films and the French contribution to cinema is that it's actually quite intimate cinema. The French movies are really about human life. While Hollywood was making epic period pieces, French directors started a movement called New Wave. Good cinema helps to bring people together. Films and documentaries help us to understand the human world around us and build empathy for other cultures, other places. The French have transformed how we document the world around us with other game-changing innovations. Nicephor Nieps was an inventor, and he was credited with taking the first photograph. Niep took the oldest surviving photograph, a picture of his backyard garden. It took eight hours to develop, he joined forces with Louis Daguerre, and together, they have been credited as the inventors of photography. Photography is, is part of the foundation of how we communicate ideas in all aspects of life. Again, the French went beyond the invention itself. In 1931, Henri Cartier-Bresson began taking photos that captured candid and powerful moments in time. His influential work laid the foundation for photojournalism. Henri Cartier-Bresson was one of the key storytellers and archivists of the 20th century. He lived during an era of incredible upheaval in the Western world. He saw two world wars. He helped to bring those moments and the truth behind war, the truth behind conflict in particular, to the masses in a way that, that had never happened before. Photojournalism has shaped our perception of human history. It allowed us to participate in a longer conversation about what is okay and what is not okay. Even before Bresson changed the world with his camera, France played a leading role in shaping human rights. From the French Revolution through the World Wars and beyond, France has helped define rights and freedoms. The French Revolution was truly the birth of democracy. This concept that all men have universal rights it's a fundamental rethinking of social relations between all the classes. 
150 years later, when human rights were threatened during World War II, the French resistance, led by Charles de Gaulle, fought back. Charles de Gaulle helped to galvanize people's will, and his call to action was certainly a, an important moment in the world coming together to fight for freedom. At his side was lawyer and professor René Cassin. After the war, Cassin was asked by the United Nations to help a global committee write the first international document to protect human rights. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights took the idea of universal human rights from this abstract concept to a list of rules that would help us to ensure that those rights were protected. Cassin won a Nobel Peace Prize in 1968 for his work. France's contributions in the arts and human rights have improved quality of life around the world. As we continue our thought experiment and remove more French innovations, great art is lost and humanity's most basic needs are threatened. Without a window into crisis around the world, accountability disappears. Without those tools, democracy would not be able to flourish. Without basic human rights, there would be more vulnerable and suffering people. It's important that we have a standard to represent global citizenry that ensures that people can have their day in court and express how they feel. We would all live in a much more violent, much less free, and much less just world. But our planet will come to a crippling standstill when we remove another French innovation that laid the foundation for our modern technological world. We're imagining a world where France's key innovations are stripped away. Without French cultural and humanitarian contributions, the world is a dark place. But as our thought experiment continues, things will get worse when we erase France's technological breakthroughs. One in particular has been hailed as kicking off the technological age, and it has an unlikely beginning. Joseph Jacquard wanted to find a way to automate textile manufacturing, one of France's biggest industries at the turn of the 19th century. Joseph Jacquard created an automated loom that was based on a punch card system. The punch card is a piece of paper that has a number of rows and a number of columns, and you punch a hole at strategic places in this card to encode data. Each punch card gave the loom instructions, a code to weave a specific pattern. This punch card is the beginning of software because you were able to create the concept of binary code, one and zero. The Jacquard loom was the first programmed piece of industrial machinery and inspired the development of programming code and computing. Programming, being able to give a machine a set of instructions is everywhere in our lives. Any infrastructure that moves things around relies on data processing and data encoding. French game changers laid the foundation for the first practical programming machines. They also pioneered the first practical long distance communication network. French technology has had a big influence in the world in a lot of ways, but one of them is telecommunications. The semaphore telegraph was invented by Claude Schapp. The semaphore was an optical telegraph that was laid out in France in the late 1700s. It was a network of towers that would relay a message that was sent using signs like wooden arms that you could move. It would be relayed by people on towers just looking through lenses to see the, the message to wherever the troops were. The semaphore telegraph allowed transmission of messages faster than horse riding couriers could carry. And it connected people in a way like never before, 50 years ahead of the invention of the electric telegraph. This was a huge leap forward for communications. The semaphore system was then implemented in many different countries around the world. Two centuries later, France was at the vanguard of another major communications milestone, when they connected a web of computers on a system called Minitel. In 1983, the French government gave every person in the country a free computer. 
A few years later, there were about 25,000 sites that you could access. So 10 years before most Americans have ever heard of the internet, people in France were online, buying things online, checking out information, playing games with other people. France was well in advance of the rest of the world. Minitel was really the first piece of technology that kind of gave a sense of what the internet could be some 20 years later. As we approach the conclusion of our thought experiment and add programming to the list of great French innovations we've stripped away, the world comes crashing down. Without programming, we lose so much in so many walks of our lives. Our means of communication, our means of transportation, all of that would collapse. It'd be chaos. Nuclear reactors and power grids shut down. We're back to the Stone Age. of contributions France has given the world, the health of humans and the planet would deteriorate. Without the systems we've come to rely on, our world would be in turmoil. Without France in our history, we have so much missing things that we take for granted, whether it be our rights, uh, various aspects of our arts, our science, all of these things would be gone. We'd be a much poorer society without it. But thankfully, this was all just an experiment and France's innovations are here to stay. Cinema, photography, the wonderful culinary gifts, manned flight, the technologies that ensure a safe food supply, medical breakthroughs, so many things that, that France has done for the world. French ingenuity helped lay the foundation for the modern world as we know it. And looking ahead, they've got ambitious plans for the future. France is building the world's largest tech hub in Paris, where new startups are developing innovative solutions for an evolving society. In terms of innovation, Paris is an amazing hub. You go to Station F, which is now one of the biggest incubators in, around the world. Jacques Cousteau's legendary exploration of the sea introduced a new world to us and the need to protect it. Today, France is still leading the charge to protect our planet. At the Paris Climate Conference held in 2015, 195 countries adopted the Paris Agreement, the historic first ever global deal on tackling climate change. Not only has France begun efforts like eliminating coal power to reduce their emissions, they've pledged funding to aid developing nations to do the same. It's no accident that France is the country where the Paris Accord was developed. France prides itself on taking leadership in issues of a global nature, and that was an important decision taken for the health of the entire world. To face challenges of the future, France is exploring new ways to power the world. The biggest international scientific collaboration in history is taking place on French soil. The project aims to harness the power of fusion to generate electricity without creating any radioactive waste. I'm very excited for the potential of France's future as it finds its role, a renewed role in the world as a leader. France is being reminded of its important place in the world and its important place in history. One of the wonderful things about France is that it has this amazing history, but still alive today is this feeling that France is transformational, whether it be scientific research in artificial intelligence, in fundamental physics, or in various aspects of the arts. There's so, so much that's contributing to the world and will probably contribute for a long time to come. We still have the ability to change the world 
by our ideas tomorrow in our future. I think it's going to be a new era of cultural and social revitalization in France. It's an exciting time.